opening statement this time. Nope. Just going to write the questions. Uh, I've got a mic in the room. Chris, you want to start? Caitlin, in sports, so much is made about chemistry. And when you were in college, you seemed so connected to your teammates on the court and off. I know you can't rush that. It doesn't happen overnight. But how do you try to build those relationships as quickly as possible now? Yeah, I think that's something that's definitely going to be important. But I think coming in here and coming to an organization where, you know, Lynn and Coach Sides, they value that. They know that's very important to create championship culture is those relationships you build with your teammates. You just can't come in here and put, you know, 12 girls on a team and five people on the court at once and, you know, assume that they're going to all mesh. That's not really how things work. They can probably get you so far, but at the same time, you got to go out of your way to build relationships with your teammates and get to know them and get to know what makes them click. Um, so I think that's definitely been a big priority, not only for myself, but our coaching staff, um, you know, every girl on our team. So, um, you know, you don't have very long to do it. Uh, it's a lot different than college. Um, you know, we play in Dallas on Friday, so we've had about a little over a week and that's about it and you've got to get ready to go. But I think it's something that you'll you'll continue to build throughout the season and you'll see that improve too. I think Chloe had her hand up there. Can you get the mic to her? Um, I know at Iowa it was mostly, if not all, you know, charter flights, but obviously with this road game to Dallas coming up, just how are you anticipating yeah. commercial flights this season? Yeah, I think it's, you know, It'll definitely be an adjustment, but you know it is what it is. I don't. I think the CBA is up for renegotiation after this season. We can opt out of it, and um, certainly the new media rights deal will have a big impact on that too. So, um, at this point uh, of my career and across the WNBA, it is what it is. I'm sure certainly everybody would say that they would love to be flying charter all the time. Um, you know, that's definitely would help a lot of problems, but. I think the, the FIBA organization has done a really good job of getting out ahead of things. You know, there's going to be a lot of security traveling with us. There'll be certain plans of, you know, how we're going to navigate going through all airports and things like that. And, um, you know, it's not just for us, it's for everybody in the WNBA. So it's not like we're the odd man out here. It's everybody has to navigate it. And I think it's going to, you know, cause some problems, maybe because the popularity of our league is continuing to grow and, you know, having to, you know, navigate travel um, with that. But at the same time, it's, you know, that's a positive thing too. Like you want people to be excited about our game. So um, hopefully it changes in the near future, but for now that's just what it is. And you know, everybody's dealing with the same thing. So you, you can't use it as an excuse. And like I said, I think the Fever organization has a, a really great plan in place to help keep us everybody safe and keep things moving along as we're traveling. Dana, go ahead. Hi, I'm Dana with Indy Star. Um, I was wondering, I know you haven't played a game officially yet, but what has been kind of the biggest transition for you from college to WNBA that you've noticed or have you not? Yeah, I think it's it's probably hard because I haven't really gotten on the court and played a game yet. Um, I don't know. I think, I think the physicality is probably going to be one of the biggest things for myself. Like, um, it reminds me of the international game in a way. Uh, the international game is very, very physical. You know, the refs just really aren't going to call it. Obviously, the college game, like, it was physical to an extent, but not, like, you know, people I'm going to be playing in this league are, like, full-grown, very strong women. And, um, you know, you're going to get hit. You're going to get bumped. Um, people are going to defend you hard when you're dribbling the ball at the court. And I think just getting used to that physicality of the game will probably be one of the, the biggest things for myself to overcome. It's just mentally, but also physically, is like, I'll have to get stronger. Obviously, that's hard to do coming from college to, like, starting a whole other season. There's only so much you can do in the weight room. But... Uh, I think as my career kind of unfolds, you know, just getting physically stronger and, you know, being able to hold my own. Lou, go ahead. Okay, well, Lou Friedman from the Seymour Tribune, Southern Indiana. Do you wish you had a little gap to decompress from the end of the NCAA season and <laughs> having the season approach so quickly? I'm like, say the men's league, you know, their next season isn't for a long time after they're drafted. Is, is that an adjustment you have to make to go bang, bang, right yeah. from one to the other? Yeah, I think certainly you could wish that you had a little break, but at the same time, like, I'm in really good basketball shape. I kind of try to look at the positives. Like, I've been playing basketball for however many months here, so maybe in a way it almost makes my transition a little easier as I've played basketball till you know, the first week of April, and now, you know, I'm going to have a game in the first week of May. I really only had about a month off, and within that month, I was pretty busy and continuing to play basketball. So for myself, I think that's like being able to find a lot of confidence, confidence in that. Like, I was playing my best basketball of my career at the end of my career, and now I get to, you know, turn the, turn the page and go to a new chapter of my life and 
have the confidence coming from there and taking the, that into this, I think is, you know, I just try to look at a positive manner. Sure, would I have loved a break and a vacation? Yeah, sure, but there's plenty of time in life and after this season to do that. So um, I'm just trying to look at it in a, in a manner of positivity of, you know, I'm in great basketball shape. I've been playing my best basketball of my life and, you know, hopefully, you know, just being able to replicate that in this league. You know, Mike in the front, then Brad in the back. Hey, Caitlin, I know you maybe had a chance to talk to Sue Bird a little bit over the past year. Was there anything in particular she told you about being a rookie and, you know, her memories of that that might help a little? Yeah, I think the biggest thing about Sue, I don't think she really said anything specifically about being a rookie. I think one of the biggest pieces of advice she said is, like, just continue to be yourself. And I think that's going to be important for me going forward is, you know, there's going to be moments where things don't work as maybe they have in the past. Um, but don't lose confidence in, you know, who I've been and what I've been able to do. And um, also being myself has got me a really long way. So just continuing to do that. And, you know, she said there's always going to be learning curves and challenges and, you know, just being able to learn from that and grow. Um, and, you know, having a little grace in that too, whether it's, you know, me having grace for myself or, you know, asking my teammates and leaning on them and asking them ways I can improve. Um, you know, not everything's going to be perfect. And I think, you know, it's really great. I get two preseason games to really go out there and just like practice and try things out. You know, it doesn't count um, and really learn about myself and what's going to be successful and what's not going to be successful and um, what's going to be good for our team and help our team. Um, you know, you know, we're a young team for the most part and building that chemistry and being able to click on the court. So I think those are the biggest things is just continuing to be me, but also evolve that too and learn and grow because there are going to be challenges along the way. And, um, you know, that's what I signed up for and that's what's going to make this really fun. Go Brad in the back, then Eric on the right. Hey, Lynn, every element of your game has been so closely <coughs> scrutinized over the last couple of years. How do you come into the league and maybe try to show something fresh or try and, and have something new that you challenge these new opponents with? <laughs> I think, uh, like I said, I think continuing to be myself, but I think one of the most exciting things when I was at Iowa and even coming here, I feel like there's still so much I can add to my game. And obviously there's not much time to do that going from the national championship game to, you know, our first preseason game here. It's not like I'm trying to add a bunch of new stuff to my game because there's just really not the time. I think um, being able to get a, a floater, um, that being that being something I'm comfortable getting, um, I don't know. I, but at the same time, I think the biggest things are like, just be confident in everything that I've been able to do. Space the floor with my shooting, um, you know, long distance threes. I think it's going to really help space things out, and especially with the people we have on our team. We have quite a few shooters that can really shoot the ball, and then some really good post players that finish inside well. So um, when you have shooters surrounding them on the perimeter, it makes it really difficult to guard them on the inside and really spaces things out so they can't, you know, choke, double, whatever they're going to try to do. Help side can't be there as much. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a learning process for myself. You know, I'm going to see what's going to work and what's not going to work at this level and then just refine that and continue to add things that are going to make me better. And um, lucky enough, I'm coming to a coaching staff that really wants to help me improve too. And they still see a lot of ways where I can get better. And, um, you know, I've already been in the gym working on some new stuff and um, adding that to my game, I think will be something that happens over the course of the season. But also, you know, after the season, the off season is kind of when you do a lot of that stuff too. Last two, uh, Eric and Tony in the second row. Caitlin Eric Grace from Fox 59 here in town. You've seen all the excitement. Rarely has a fan base or a city ever been more excited for a singular player. The, the draft night celebration here at Gamebridge, you're revving up the crowd for the Pacers game. What has that been like as you've kind of gotten to settle down here in Indianapolis, your new home? <laughs> well, I didn't know like how the transition would really be going from Iowa City to like Indianapolis of like how people how many people would know me and things like that and honestly it's not that much different which is like really exciting I think it just shows the excitement in this city for you know women's basketball and you know hopefully what I'm able to bring this to this organization but just the entire hype surrounding this team and I think even the Pacers too and what they've been able to do this year and, um, you know I feel like like you said like there was over 7,000 people here just to watch the draft on the big screen. Like so many of those people could have just chose to stay home and watch it on TV, but they decided to come here and celebrate with everybody. And I think it just shows, you know, these people are itching for the WNBA season. And, um, you know, I'm just excited. I think it's going to be really special and really fun. The crowds are going to be great, whether we're here or whether we're on the road. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I, the crowds will be much different from what I've had in college. So being able to play in front of that all last year will um, definitely have experience that I can lean on there. You know, it's going to be loud. People are going to be screaming. And 
I think I would be almost be more weirded out if it wasn't like that. So, um, but no, I think the transition's been amazing. The support I felt from this community has been tremendous, and I'm just excited to get playing. Tony, last one. Kelly, you talked about veterans and coaches here that have helped you, but Kate, the last couple mm -hmm. weeks, how often have you talked? With her and what kind of resource do you think you could both be for each other through this rookie year yeah i talk to her like every single day like both when we when we both get done with training camp we text each other how it went and everything and she's obviously one of my best friends so even if she wasn't in training camp with the aces i would still be talking to her but um i don't know i think we're somebody that can just like bounce ideas off of each other whether it's life whether it's basketball and obviously i just want the best for her no matter what and you know, I hope she can make that team. And, you know, to me, she's a pro player. She brings every, you know, asset that you could possibly want, whether it's shooting, whether it's defense, whether it's leadership. Um, in my eyes, she's one of the best leaders I've ever been around in my entire life. And I think everybody that's been her teammate or has coached her would say the exact same thing. So um, I know, like, she's somebody that I can always lean on and rely on, whether she's my teammate, whether she's just my friend. Um, I wish she was still my teammate, um, but no, I'm just really happy and excited for her, and um, I talk to her every single day, so I know she's killing it. Can you two bridge the South Carolina-Iowa gap this year? Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, I, I think more than anything, like me and Aaliyah, like, we love each other, like, we're excited to play for each other, with each other, and I think, you know, all of women's basketball should feel the same exact way. Like, that's what makes this so special. You go from playing in college and maybe being competitors and rivals and then you get here and now you get to play with each other like that's the best of both worlds and now you get to put everything together and um yeah i think it makes it really really special awesome thank you caitlin appreciate it